morning. Um, thank you, Morten, very much for the great talk. Um, uh, people, uh, if you have questions, uh, please put them on the pad um, or IRC, but preferably the pad. And then we'll also open this room in a minute or two so that if anyone who wants to join here and ask the questions directly to Mohsen, they could do that as well. Um, dear Mohsen, please take it away. Hello, greetings. Um, yeah, I don't see any questions yet. Uh, so let me... Uh, add a few additional notes uh, to uh, what was in the presentation. In there, I make um, several points. Uh, some of them are tactical, uh, some are more strat strategic. Um, let me delve into the strategic message uh, a bit. Um, on the uh, messaging capabilities of Emacs and the broader office environment capabilities of Emacs. Uh, we have a huge, incredibly powerful asset, but the amount of complexity and uh, the surrounding uh, configuration uh, capabilities and hurdles and difficulties that are involved into making uh, a, a really powerful environment for ourselves, we have a big obstacle. And that obstacle is that of integration. So over the past 40 years, the general model has been that of producing components where we um, <clears throat> do great stuff. We, we put uh, various email uh, MTAs <clears throat> and support them through Emacs. Uh, additionally, uh, we say that uh, we want Emacs to be used on all platforms. If you are on Windows, there is Emacs support for it. If there is uh, Mac OS, there is support for that. And of course, all of the GNU Linux stuff, uh, capabilities and platforms. Um, so all of this results into tremendous amounts of energy to go both on the developer side and on the user side to support everything. And that's what we have been doing over the past 40 years. What I am saying is that um, perhaps we should revisit this approach and consider uh, moving towards creating a complete uh, uh, liber halal free software uh, digital ecosystem for ourselves and consider Emacs as the usage environment of that totality of uh, the digital ecosystem. This will um, solve many problems if we were to buy into such an approach. If we were to say that as the platform, uh, de facto and because of um, everything that is uh, happening, Debian is a reasonable good choice. And then we would uh, tie in uh, all Emacs capabilities primarily and firstly to uh, our own platform and uh, start building on it. So let's take the uh, the situation with um, email in such a scenario. Uh, you, th the main obstacles that we have right now is that uh, GNU's comes out with support for pretty much everything. But as a user, someone trying to uh, buy into doing email, email on Emacs, which of these uh, facilities, which of these features would be the right way to go? 
So what I am saying, if with having chosen our platform as Debian, um, what if we were to say that we would buy into something like Qmail as uh, the outgoing message model and um, just uh, fully uh, bring it in uh, and consider it as the only and the default MTA for everything that we do. Um, suddenly, a whole lot of uh, complexity goes away. Um, and uh, similarly, for bringing in email, what if we were to say that uh, we have bought into offline IMAP? And then the next really interesting piece is what should be our mailboxes? This notion that uh, today, uh, de facto Gmail is uh, the universal place where you get your mailboxes. And very easily, we can, not very easily, but we, we certainly can support uh, Gmail. But what if we were to get in the business of actually providing uh, mailboxes for everyone? and combine that with the platform and the mail user agent. So that's really the um, uh, strategic message that I want to, uh, that I'm sending. Excellent, thank you. And I think in the meantime, we have um, four questions on the panel already. Okay, um, I don't see them here. Oh, are you looking in the public chat here on Big Blue Button? Yes. Okay, let me put a link. Um, so there's a separate pad where people are posting the questions. Okay, now I am seeing. Yeah, if it might be easier, I could probably copy the questions over here if that you know, we might no, prefer. No, I, I, I am actually seeing them. It's okay. Perfectly, perfectly okay. So right. the first question is, um, something I have liked about not much is using mail dear make searching fast and the knowledge that you have all your email uh, period. Why GNU's over not much? Um, as a side note, you have also a much sync for not much uh, client and uh, JMAP for more exotic normal clients. Um, so, um, I think uh, there are two things going on here. Uh, not much is more than one thing. Not much is uh, a search, a mail search engine, and also not much is a, a MUA. So, in terms of choosing, uh, certainly for uh, search for mail search capabilities, um, we should go with not much. And there is GNU's search capabilities for not much in there. So um, what I am suggesting is that we stick to GNU's as an MUA, but the search capabilities that you are talking about or that the question mentions, um, are certainly available. A second question is, uh, so the idea is more about Emacs as a holistic computing experience with other packages and services rather than about email specifically as an alternative to something like Microsoft Office Suite. Yes, this is right on the point. The what I am saying that is that email by itself um, is not really all that meaningful or interesting. And everywhere that you look in the proprietary uh, model, you would see that the likes of Google and the likes of Microsoft do not view email as standalone capabilities. They see it as integrated with address book. They see it as integrated with calendar. 
they see it uh, uh, integrated with search they see it as integrated um, with your to-do list and time management so uh, you are very right the, the question is right uh, on point uh, email by itself uh, is not significant and the reason why uh, Emacs is the right place to do email is because Emacs is the kitchen sink. It does absolutely everything. And that's what you want. A third question is, early on you express misgivings about the Western copyright regime, but you're using a GPL license. Is that a conflict? Great work, by the way. Um, no, I don't think it's a it's a conflict. Um, my position is that uh, the Western intellectual property right regime is a colossal ownership mistake. Having said that, and I do call for its abolishment. Uh, having said that. It is unrealistic to assume or recognize that just because I say it and just because I believe it, in fact, uh, it will be abolished or that a significant change would happen, particularly in the Western world. Uh, so uh, uh, in the Western uh, context, uh, what can we do? What should we do? And what I am saying there is that, uh, particularly in the context of services, uh, all uh, licenses uh, should be the strictest ones possible. And the one that is codified is the Afero GPL license. So I have subjected all my work to the Afero GPL license. Uh, I know of GNU. How do you think about using it for packaging, configuring Emacs, your various packages, else you might look it up, or Nix OS? Um, so the, the idea here is that when we go back to this uh, full integration in the context of a digital ecosystem. Um, a, a major challenge is that of bringing in all the necessary packages from different sources. So for example, in, in the context of uh, mail user agents, to put things together, you need a, a set of apt packages coming from the Debian world, you need a set of PYPI packages coming from the Python world, and you need a set of Lisp packages coming from uh, eLisp archives. And, um, and likely you need a whole lot others. You need uh, possibly Node.js stuff, and you also possibly need um, Ruby stuff. Um, and this integration uh, is going to be complex. The approach that I have taken is that of going um, best of breed in the context of each of the domains. So uh, in Python, um, while there may be other packaging models, um, we go with PYPI. Uh, on the platform, it's clear that it's apt. On the Linux, uh, over the past five years, we have solved uh, mostly uh, that arch archiving ma machinery. If uh, the question is, um, and I'm not familiar with uh, the uh, specifics of what was mentioned in terms of a unified packaging model. But if the question is that of a unified packaging integration model, um, 
I'd love to do it when it's mature and ready. Um, at this point, um, I am going the route of best of breed selections within each domain. Cool. And if I might chime in briefly, uh, Mohsen, I think Please. there was a small yeah, typo in the question. Um, they are asking about uh, GNU geeks or mentioning GNU geeks and also potentially NixOS. And I think these two also very much go with your idea of sort of tying everything together, these different package management systems. So GNU geeks um, is a GNU Linux distribution like Debian is, but it's written in GNU Gile Lisp uh, or Gile Scheme. Um, and it's a very interesting concept where all of the packaging um, code and everything is done in GNU Gal um, uh, scheme and ties everything together and integrates great with Emacs. So that might be something worth checking out later on. Right. Um, I had taken a very cursory look at that. Um, and um, I will keep my eyes open on it. Uh, I think in due course, maybe that's the way to go. There's one more question coming in. I let the person who is asking the question to complete it. OK, and yeah, in the meantime, I'll also mention that I think we have about um, four more minutes of on-stream live Q&A uh, time. Um, at which point, after that, the stream will move on. But um, you, Mohsen, and of course, uh, people watching are welcome to come here, join this big blue button room directly, and ask the questions here or on the pad. Great, great. So let me read the question. Uh, is this being split up in a heavily configured server for email hosting and the thin client package for you locally? client to integrate with your Emacs package, maybe with a, a client uh, thin Docker container for other packages, like not much locally. Um, actually, that is not really exactly what I am uh, speaking of. Um, the, the, the concept of a thin client is um difficult to characterize so if you have um emacs and everything else that you want to use as a usage environment along with your um, email system if we want to call that a thin client um certainly that is uh, what i call the usage environment um, on the services side, um, I uh, am <clears throat> not speaking of uh, just one. I am speaking of uh, support for multiple, of course, obviously. But having uh, one that in my own case, for example, by name.net is the primary support. Um, and in terms of um, packaging that in a uh, as a thin client instead of inside of a Docker, that's certainly possible, but um, it is not. Uh, you, I don't consider it as the only way to go. You can you can do your packaging uh, any way you want. Um, and um, well, you can do your packaging and then deliver it however you want. On these questions, if um, I was not on the point in uh, understanding the questions and answering them correctly, if there are any follow-ups, I'd be happy to take them. Yeah, if um, there are no other questions, um, I can perhaps bring up the presentation. 
and maybe make a few additional uh, points. So um, I think one key slide in here is uh, this one, where um, what I am saying is that we have been very um, good at producing components and that we really need to get into uh, systems uh, development or environments development as opposed to components development. And to raise that uh, a bit more so that we can move towards having uh, something that we can call a non-proprietary digital ecosystem, I think we need to uh, work towards having frameworks for services. And while we have defined free software or what I call liber halal software, we don't have precise definitions for liber services, free services. Free services is going to be a very bad name because we want it to be commercial. We want people to uh, pay for it as they use it. And uh, so the natural name would be something like liber services. And uh, in that context, if you go to liberservices.org, you will see my definition of what uh, uh, that would mean, what non-proprietary codification of services would mean. Um, another slide perhaps to take a look at is this one where I am making the case for, oops, sorry, went the wrong way, where I'm making the case for not considering Emacs by itself as core of anything, but uh, viewing and cultivating and introducing um, this concept of common agent and building on it. Let me go see if there are any other questions. Yeah, I didn't see any more. Yeah, may I drop in and ask a question directly? Of course. Okay, so I have a question regarding uh, combining GNUs and not much. Yes. So uh, do you combine tagging facilities of not much into GNUs as well? So, uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Do you also integrate tagging facilities of not much into GNUs? Tagging. Um, I have not done that. Okay, because I was looking into combining news and not much at some point, but uh, what like stopped me from continuing is that uh, not much is mostly about tags, and then uh, news has uh, a search option for not much, but uh, using not much. But uh, how do you add tags from news? <laughs> That's um just Right. Uh, in terms of continuous use, it's only recently that I'm doing that. And I don't think it means that it is not doable. It's just that in my own case, I haven't done it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's certainly doable. It's just uh, you present this uh, unified system that uh, like brings everything together. So I was wondering if uh, it's already yeah, implemented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I must say all that I do is uh, I uh, want to say that that is the direction that I want to go. Uh, okay, okay. We have a long way to go. It, it, it's mostly a question of, and that is not the general direction 
uh, and formalization that has been happening. So more or less, a, a lot of what I mentioned in there is uh, not fully baked. OK, thanks. I think we also have a question here in chat, Mohsen. I wasn't sure if you already saw or answered it or not. Sorry. Um, no, let me. Is it on the chat? Uh, yes, public chat here on Big Blue Button. Oh, question by Thuna. Chat on the Big Blue Button. Um, yeah. Can you expand on definition of liber halal? I'm a bit lost. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so, you see, we have um, labels of free software that are um, well established and we have uh, definitions of open source that are well established. And uh, both of these are in the Western context and from uh, the perspective of Western folks. Um, what I am saying is that neither free software nor open source are the right labels. What we are looking for is actually ethical software, not free software. Freedom is uh, something that is wonderful and great, but it may not be the right thing to be free. What I am saying here is that a manner of existence of software is the key concept. Allow me to share uh, the um, screen, just one moment, and maybe point you to a place where um, I could answer it in depth. It is certainly not a topic that I could do justice to in just um, uh, a moment. So if you were to look for uh, nature of polyexistentials, and Googling that would take you there. There is a 250 page document there that says um, why I believe the um, Western intellectual property rights is wrong. And um, he goes through and says, well, if um, polyexistentials are not to be governed by uh, the intellectual property rights regime, then what is the right manner of governing them? So what is the right manner of existence of software? And what label should we use for that? And in here, there is a whole section that about 10 pages or so that describes um, what halal means and why the liber halal uh, label is the right uh, label. So uh, let me perhaps point you to that section. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, on the cure section. Yeah, I think if you were to go to chapter 12, that would be a good place. Do you happen to have the link to this page handy, Mosan? Um, uh, yeah, it is included in the presentation. Let me okay. uh, go there very quickly. Um, oops, sorry. Just one moment. 
yeah, it's in the presentation uh, with a QR code. So let me look it up and bring it back up again. Thank you. Yeah. So the link for that document is on slide 13. And can you see it? No, I'm not seeing your slides, um, but okay, okay. Yeah, it is getting shared again. Yep. Thanks. So it's oh, and getting... I see. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that is the. Oh, very good. Somebody else also th threw it, threw it up on there. But right, it's a little bit that. different. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's PLPC 120.033. I mean, any other questions? Yes, thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, I don't see any other questions on the pad. Oh, there's that one new question here from Thuno again. What is the scope of what you are imagining? Just software? Uh, no, certainly not just software. It is um, software and services. So that is, I think, the next challenge and the next step for us. We have to uh, think of ways of competing with um, Gmail and uh, Outlook.com. Uh, so services are certainly within the scope. In the abstract sense of what polyexistentials are, so polyexistentials are things that exist in multiple. So any form of knowledge is within the scope. And um, that uh, goes to medications uh, goes to anything that is patentable and art and anything that is uh, copyable. Yes. Yes, NFTs are a, a, a form of a creating um, mono existentials out of poly existentials so by the time that you create an nft it is no longer uh, the subject of what i am talking about but the process of creating mono existentials off of poly existentials is uh, what we should be discussing there is a section in in that book on that topic as well with the same subject of uh, how one goes about creating that. And let uh, you see, any sort of a name could be think, uh, thought of as an NFT. So if you think of our domain name system, although it is in the realm of software and services, uh, what you have uh, emacsconf.org that has become uh, unique and it's uh, a mono existential. Uh, I think my key message here is this vocabulary of poly existence and mono existence and mixed existence, which is the novelty in uh, the stuff that I have written. That I have written. Uh, we, we all have understood these for a long time. Uh, it's a question of coming up with the right vocabulary to 
uh, express them with precision that remains and then acting on them. Excellent. Um, as a lot of people have said, I think both here and also in IRC, there's a lot of um, information and material to digest from this talk and to try to think really deeply about um, for you know the uh, coming weeks and months. So that's that's great. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, we can keep this session going uh, as long as you want. The stream has already moved on, but uh, here it is open. If folks have any more questions, you know, feel free to post them here or on the separate pad page. Um, yeah, or if not, then we can all drop off at some point. Sure. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, otherwise, perhaps we could go and watch the rest. Yeah, I mean, I think perhaps it's a good thing to uh, consider the session complete. Sure, sounds good to me. Thank you again very much, Mohsen. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. Take care. Take care.